Hello and welcome to this tutorial session. In this tutorial, we will cover loops utilizing a program. Before we look at the program, let's quickly cover what is a loop, which loops we are covering in this tutorial, and what are their syntaxes are. A loop is a control structure that causes a statement or statements to repeat. In this session, we will cover three different loops, which are while loop, for loop, and do while loop. A while loop is a pretest loop that starts with the word while and then the expression or condition within an open and closed parentheses, followed by statements in block statement. We always have to make sure our loop reaches the false status utilizing increment or decrement counter. Otherwise, our loop will become an infinite loop, which is not a fun situation, since an infinite loop will fill up your RAM space, and at one point of time, the system will run out of memory and it will cause system failure. A great use for while loop is usually an input validation. Next is for loop which is also a pretest loop with this syntax. It starts with four open and closed parentheses, and inside the parentheses we have the initialization, expression, which is the same thing as condition, and our counter control, separated by semicolon, followed by the block statements. For, for loop is mostly used when you roughly know how many times your loop will iterate. They are uh, they're a great tool to use with arrays and file when reading and writing data. And the last loop we will cover is do while loop, which is a post test since the expression will come after we at least run the program once. Here is the syntax. We start by the word do followed by the block statements and after closing the curly braces of our block statement, we will write while open and close parentheses and our expression followed by semicolon. Do while is wildly used in menu driven programs where you want the user to see the menu at least once before making the selections. It is also used when you want to make the user um, and ask them if they want to quit the program or rep repeat the program. Okay, let the fun begin. In this simple program, I have implemented three different loops to see them in action. This simple program asks the user to input a positive number and then our for loop here will count the number backward to zero. At the end of the program, I will be asking the user if they want to input another number and the program will repeat itself should the user choose Y. To repeat this program, I will be utilizing a do while loop and because of that, I will put my whole program into the do clause or do block statement as you can see right over here. Next, after the, the declaration of my variables, I will ask the user to input a positive number and I will check the user's input using a while loop. I could say while num greater than zero, but what if the user inputs string? That will halt my program and that's something that I want to avoid. To count for anything else that the user may type aside from a positive number, I can simply use the NOT operator and say while NOT what I asked for. This loop will execute if any other type aside from integer type is entered in true standard keyboard. In my while block statement, I will send out a simple message asking the user to input a positive number again. Once the user input the positive number, my for loop will start executing and counting backward to zero. I have initialized my for loop with user's input, so I wrote int i equal num. And as long as counter is greater than or equal to zero, I will be decrementing by one and will print i with the space right next to it. So for example, if the user inputs three, the count statement will print three, and since three is still greater or equal to zero, i minus minus will decrement by one, and now i is two. And now that is now two, which is the next number when counting backward is printed. Again, since two is greater than or equal to zero, I minus minus will decrement by one, and now we print one. One is still less than or equal to zero. One more time, I minus minus, 
and now we print 0. 0 is still less than or equal to 0, but if we decrement it by 1, it will go to negative, which will make our expression false, and that's how the loop will stop. And at this point, I will ask the user if the user would like to repeat the program or not, and the user will input their choice. Note, I have given user the choice to input n if they don't want to continue repeating this program, but in reality, I'm not, I'm not checking for that. I'm only checking for y, because anything else aside from y will end the program at this point. Um, it is important, however, to always communicate to the user one of the many ways that the program will end. Now let's run this program. All right, in running this program, I'm using F5, and once I do F5 here, here would be the output window, and there it is. It's asking me to enter a positive number. I'm going to just be rebellious and enter a negative number in here. It's going to ask me for a positive number. I'm going to just enter a character instead. Once again, it's asking me to enter a positive number. I'm just going to enter gibberish. It's going to ask me to enter a positive number. Now, at this point, I'm going to start by putting, um, let's just put three, the one that we just uh, used as an example in a couple of slides ago. And it's going to count it down to zero. And it's the program is going to ask me if I want to rerun this program or not. And I say yes. And notice that I'm, I just put lowercase y. And it's going to understand it since we have used it in the or statement. And now over here, it's um, going to ask me for another number. I'm going to put 5. And the program continues. Now, I'm going to be putting um, any other num any other characters in here aside from n. And look what happens. The program ends, and we are out of this uh, session. This will conclude our loops video tutorial. I hope this tutorial helps you understand the concept of loops better.